All right, can you hear me? Sorry about that. I was chasing my dog around the porch trying to get him inside. I just, I did get your email. <laughs> yeah, that's funny that, um, that's okay. I mean, if you want to start, start ahead of time, that's fine. If you're, you feel comfortable enough with starting. And I, I think what you did was great. So um, just a few tweaks with the hierarchy and I think you're good to go. Is it okay that the background in the world was found with research? Yes, definitely. If you found, <laughs> but that's a great, that's a good thing. Cause that to me, that shows that you're excited and you're looking forward to it. And um, so to me, it's great to, to hear that and, and see you do that. So, and, and what's really nice, if you get started early enough, you can evolve your work throughout the week. So then it's just pushing you to get better anyway. You guys only have four weeks of every class, so it, it goes really super fast. Um, so, I mean, the more time that you give to your assignments and your revisions and your concept development, the better off you'll be, I think. And you'll learn so much more. You'll gain so much more out of it than starting late you know, or trying to catch up because you, um, you know, are trying to get work in late. Yeah. <laughs> but that's always great because that's the mindset of a designer, really. We're always looking to improve anything, even our work, um, stuff that's already out there. So that's a good thing. We just have to be happy at some point, though. We need to know when a dead, you know, when to stop. <laughs> well, I don't want to say normal. I don't think there's uh, anything uh, anything that's really truly normal out there, anybody. And if they are, it's probably they're probably not normal. <laughs> it's just one of those uh, quirks that you know designers do typically have, um, especially with being a little bit more OCD about things, which I think is a great thing um, when it's used for the positive. So, <laughs> which is you know the quality of your work. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but what you did was great. I actually, if you want to share your work tonight, uh, today, uh, share your screen, um, that'd be great just to give other people an idea of, um, you know, where you, you're going. And I think everybody else can learn from that, too. <laughs> there you go. But that could be a good thing, too. See, there's always, it's, it's a balance. <laughs> Every, I think everybody has that at some point. It's just, you know, what it is that, you know, in the extreme of it, so. That's funny. All right, well, thanks for coming in. Hopefully we'll get some more people in here. If not, we're good to go anyway. We're uh, rolling right along. It is already Wednesday, week, it's not week two. I don't know why I put week two. I was supposed to be week one live lecture two. My apologies. I quickly changed that. Um, but we, uh, when we met the first time on Monday, we just kind of did a quick intro of the course. We went over some things in regards to deadlines, all the spring cleaning stuff. We went over your discussion, and then we went right into your assignment one, um, which is uh, your strategy planning of what you're gonna do for next week. Yes. <laughs> I was probably running after my dog and I was quickly, it's like having another kid, you know? So yeah, distractions definitely don't help. I am going to skip ahead here because we went through all of this and um, at the end here, this is where we're going to the assessment one. Did you take a look at this yet? Of course you probably did, right? Yes. So we're going to take a look at your uh, assessment one information here. You know me. Assessment one is going to be an interesting um, assessment because what we're going to be doing is creating an infographic, infographic from a template. So um, it'll be kind of a neat way to understand the pros and cons maybe of each because next week you're going to be doing it from scratch. So there's different I mean, I guess, and it's subjective to it, you know, sometimes too with which one you, you prefer. 
but there are definitely objective pros and cons. So you guys are going to be discussing that in the discussions this week anyway. So that's, you know, a good thing too. go ahead and read through the background. It talk, just talks about, you know, the templates uh, for infographics, what to be mindful of. Okay, so I'm going to go right to the prompt. So for this assessment, I'm going to be your client. So I will be your client. I want you to make an infographic on the use of visual data and infographics using a template of your choice. So use the data presented in the discussion background, also listed below, or download the doc file here. So there's a Word file that you can download. It's a hyperlink right here. And in this Word file is basically pretty much all of this information. <coughs> Excuse me. So you'll be using this information and you'll be plugging this into a template. And that template you're gonna find um, off of these free options here on this hyperlink. So from your, the research you did in the discussion, find a template that works for the data and customize it to fit the purpose. You can find some free options here. Now, when you click on this, I just kind of want you guys to be aware that not all of these are free, but there are free options. So if you click on this, it takes you to pretty much a resource um, article where you can you know, take a look at each one of these different sites. And it'll tell you right here whether it's free or not, so you can definitely check that out. Um, you can read a little bit about each one of them. So if you, you know, wanted to kind of look at some of the videos, uh, intros of these. This one has a price to it, so you just have to be mindful of that and, and choose a free one. Of course, we don't want to, you know, obviously charge, have you guys spend money on this if you don't have to. So, so choose a free one. Here's one, Be Funky, and tells you just a little bit about this one. This is a photo editor and collage maker. It includes an infographic tool, so it customizes your theme with images and icons and personalize the infographic by adjusting text, colors, and layout. Pretty easy. Here's one, VizMe. I've worked with this one too before. You can read um, each one of, about each one of these. This one's $5. But it's a nice way to kind of see what's out there. Even if you're, you know, it, it does charge, you can just read about it anyway and see what's out there for, you know, in case that you need to, um, if you're out there in the working world and you have a budget, you can definitely check out those possibly for specific purposes. There's another free one. But for this one, I actually am going to go with um, this VIN gauge. I was looking at this one here. So I'm just going to click right on that hyperlink. And typically uh, they will have you sign up for free or you know some type of a free membership option there. I'm going to go ahead and click on templates. I already signed in, so I'm good to go. Back off of these here too. So typically, and it might look different based on the website and the company, but typically you'll see some type of a template area that you can click on, and then possibly some some actual visual templates that you can take a look at. Um, these they have different categories here so you don't necessarily have to click on infographics if you're looking for presentations reports charts mind maps roadmaps brochures all this stuff is also free pretty cool we want to click on infographics for this one and then it breaks it down in, into even more subcategories here so informational Statistical, process, geographic, timeline, comparison, list, fun data, tutorials. And you can click on each of these and, and check it out. I think the one that I'm going to go with is statistical because we have a lot of, if you look at this here, we have a lot of statistics. Let me zoom in. So it's like 90%, 40%, 84%. There's pretty much more statistics listed here than anything. So I'm just going to click on statistical. And then it kind of just hones in on, you know, specific infographics that you might want to utilize based on, you know, imagery. Um, even though the topic may not be what you're going to be doing your infographic on, it's okay. You can edit it. So, for instance, this one talks about teen social media and technology. So, I can preview this. If I wanted to change this to be more towards what I'm doing, I can go in and edit the, the headline. The body copy, I can even um, obviously edit the statistics in there. That's the idea of a 
template. So you can scroll through and just kind of take a look at all these really interesting infographics. And what's nice about this is it gives you kind of inspiration of, um, you know, styles, typefaces, colors, stories, and how they visually um, show uh, statistics for certain topics. So this can be really, really inspirational for you guys next week when you are doing your, your infographics from scratch. There's one on trick or treat. It's kind of funny. So some really interesting things. I, am, I actually am gonna do this one, Reasons Why Charts. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go ahead and preview that. I think it's very simple and I think this definitely can work for what we're doing for this particular assessment. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on here. I'm gonna click create. Yours might look a little different depending on the website that you're gonna access. Oops. But um, pretty much, you know, they're all gonna be somewhat similar in how you edit it. Maybe not the navigate, you know, the actual aesthetics of how you edit this but there'll be a, an area where you can actually go and edit it. Right, exactly. Well, you know what? Simple is one of the hardest things to achieve without being boring, right? And I think when you're starting out, and I've been there before, I, as a student, especially, when I look back at my past work, I'm like, oh my goodness, like I've tried to cram so much stuff. And it's not, that's not what it's all about. We really have to embrace the white space and be simple about things, but memorable and have very unique designs yet simple. That's what really works. But I think in time, like I did when I was a student, I kind of honed in on that and, and learned how to edit out certain things. I embraced more of the, the positive and negative space. And that's just something that you kind of evolve throughout time too. Yeah, it's amazing. When you, when you guys graduate, you're going to look back in a year. If you're working in the field for a year, you're going to look back at your old work and hopefully say, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? Because then you know you're, you're, uh, you're evolving. And everybody, and everybody should be like that. If you are truly working you know, to achieve in your field, uh, you're, you're working that year after school, you should be looking back and, and knowing, kind of learning through the process. Because there's a lot of things that you guys won't learn in school that you'll learn out there. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, I went through, geez, my four years undergrad, and then I worked for 10 years, and I there's stuff that I never, never knew until I was actually working. And then I went for another almost two years, well, about a year for my graduate studies. And there's always new stuff to learn. And in the working world, it's a little different. There's things that you obviously go back on from school, obviously the foundation of what we do. But there's definitely a lot of things that you can't learn in class that you will in the working world. But a lot of this too is evolving as a person. You'll, you will be evolving hopefully as an individual. And then, you know, gaining more perspective and experiences. This is outside of even the design world. The more experiences that you have in the, in the world itself, the more you can draw from in your career, you know, different perspectives that you'll have. So it's always good to uh, be open to new, new experiences. Anyway, as I go off into, on a tangent here. So... <laughs> So you will be hopefully honing and working on your, your, yourself and your skills as you go forward as a designer. All right, so here I have, no, it's okay. I get onto those tangents, but I think it's a good thing to talk about that because sometimes we, we, we only think about what we're doing presently, which is good. It's good to be in the present moment, but it's also good to kind of think about the future when you're thinking about you know, being in, in your career. All right, and, and it's good to kind of give you my perspective on things too, yeah. Because believe me, I, I thought I knew everything when I graduated my undergrad and I went out there and I was like, oh my gosh. But I also got uh, hired in into a really small advertising firm. So I did a lot more than a typical person would if they were to get hired into a bigger firm. So that kind of makes a difference too. 
And I, I, you know, I love the experience. I don't regret any part of it. And in fact, I actually um, prefer the smaller studios and advertising agencies because you do get to go, you, you get more client interaction than you would if you worked at a big firm. You get to do a little bit more creatively and also, you know, outside of that too. All right, so this here, this infographic says 65% avoid going to the doctor. Isn't that funny? It should say men, right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, uh, reasons. I know I avoid sometimes too, so I can't say, say, say that. So there's different percentages down there that kind of base off of, you know, why 65% avoid going to the doctor. Um, you know, obviously this is nothing that has to do with what we're doing, right? So I have to edit this information to, um, to fit what we're doing. Let me view this a little smaller here so I can see it all. There we go. So how do we do that? All right, well, let's go back and take a look at what we have to, to work with here. Let's go back to your assessment one. So we have the percentage, not, okay, so what we're gonna be doing here is let's click on this Word file. Let's take a look at this first and see. We have all the information here. This Word file is pretty much what you see in your assignment details too, but. Okay, here's the Word file you can pull from. The headline is statistics uh, on visual data and infographics. Now, you could probably change this a little bit more to be a little bit more exciting. Maybe um, instead of saying statistics on visual data and infographics, maybe and say, say something like the power of infographics. You know, something, um, something a little bit more interesting than just statistics on visual data and infographics. We can kind of work with that headline a little bit. So if you want to change that to better pull in an audience, make it more visually interest or verbally interesting, I would be all open to that as long as it is relatable to the information. This, however, needs to stay all, stay the same, okay? So 90% of information transmitted to the brain is visual. That's one statistic. 40% of people respond more to visual information than text. 84% of communication will be visible by 2018. Infographic design increases 1% each day. That's kind of crazy, right? Approximately 13 million results on search for infographic on Google. I know I'm probably one of those many. Infographics are liked and shared on social media three times more than any other type of content. If you think about it, it's just an easy way to share information and factual information in an interesting and unique way. So that's why it's so popular. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, I don't know if that changed. Obviously, we're dealing with older data here, but this is what we have to deal with. Okay, so what I'm looking at here is basically four percentages, right? We got 90%, 40%, 84, and then 1%. And then the rest of this is more, um, you know, kind of factual information telling you how many results, maybe not necessarily in percentages. So what, on, what I'm kind of pointing out here is you can probably, or you should show at least four um, percentage information, right? So that's why I went with the statistics part of that. So let's go back to, um, let's go back to our editing here. Boop, hold on one second. You said something and I lost my chat area here. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, so, you know, I'm going to change the headline here. I'm going to go ahead and click right inside with my type, or actually my, my selection tool, and I can see that these are different copy boxes that can be changed. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to eliminate this one totally. You can delete that. So you, these are really kind of fun to play around with, these. Um, these copy boxes and these templates is what I'm talking about here. I mean, get rid of this. I don't really need this box anymore. But you can change each one of these. Some of these are different copy boxes depending on the emphasis that you want. Oops, I don't want to do that. But it works pretty much just like any type of um, editing software where you can kind of, you know, when you click on your text, you have all of your presets kind of changing up here. You can maybe look at your alignment here, your alignment here as well. 
um, typeface. So if you want to change it, you can do that here. As long as you have it selected, that's usually how you can change it. Here's the point size. So if I wanted to go bigger, I can go bigger here. So then if you select all with your type tool and highlight it, you can you know, change the copy. Power of infographics. Just make sure that you have it spelled right. And um, let me see. Actually, I kind of like that font. I'm going to leave it as is. And um, oh, my letting. Let's pull that. That's where you can, you know, change the spacing in between your words. You want me to go up. Okay, pull that in just a little bit. So it reads a little bit better, closer together, I should say. Um, and then I'm gonna highlight this and change the color. So uh, what's nice about this, it has its own swatch colors based on this particular theme. So I can just kind of do that, it's kind of nice. Maybe I'll make this just bold in itself. And then I can kind of move it based on where I want it. If I select this and just click right on it and then maybe push up on my keyboard or my um, arrow tools, I can push this up or down depending on where I want it. All right, um, any questions about that? It's pretty easy, right? <clears throat> I guess that's the pro, right? It's like kind of an easier way to do it quick. The, the design's already there for you guys. We're good to go. Okay, so just make sure your headline's big. You know, you want it to be the center of attention, the focal point for the most part. I mean, I think it was one of my suggestions for you. Actually, no, Christina, yours was good. The only thing I suggested was your bar graph was a little smaller, and I'd like to see that a little bit bigger. That's what we discussed. Okay, these um, statistics, I'm gonna actually eliminate this one because I only have four, right? We have four percentages, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. Oops. And a lot of this is in separate elements, so. And then I'm gonna shift select, see if I can do a select all here. There we go. And I'm gonna pull these over. And we can always align these as we go forward here. I'm gonna pull this up closer to the headline here. We can always shift this and make sure it's aligned. There we go. And then I'm gonna shift this up because we're gonna kind of reorganize this a little bit. And now I'm gonna plug in my information. Now at this point, I'm probably gonna save this just so um, I don't lose it here. Oh, there's no saving option. Hmm, okay, we'll just kind of keep going then. Typically there is a saving option. I don't know if I'm not seeing it, but let me see, copy. No, I don't see it over here. We'll just leave, we'll just keep going. But typically there is, a, it might be saving as I'm doing it too. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull in these percentages. So the first percentage was the 90% information transmitted to the brain is visual. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually type in here or select this copy and I'm just gonna write information. And actually I can copy this too from the copy. I should, probably should do that. So copy and paste it in here so you don't have any spelling errors. And then this is the percentage I will change to 90%. And then this is where we have to change the chart. So if we double click on that chart, what's nice is it pulls up um, its own little area here where you can actually plug in. And it actually, for this one, it has May and June. Um, so I'm just going to ignore that because it's just telling you which one's what. So May is, is, uh, orange. What I could put in there is, um, this would be, um, information and this would be, oh, 
visual information, non-visual information. There we go. So what we would want to show is 90% for um, the, actually, let me swap these. Let's do visual for the, the orange and the non-visual, because I think that the orange is more, you know, it's just a, a brighter, more contrasted area. And then we'll put 90 here. And of course, this changes to 10, because, you know, 90 plus 10 is 100, right? So that's kind of what we have to do a little math there. So this shows, oh, you know what? This should be 90. This should be 10. I don't know why that flopped. There we go. So that's showing the orange is the 90% and the little yellow is the non-visual, which is uh, the cream color. All right. Any questions about that? Okay. The next one would be the second um, statistics, which is oops, people. Oops. Respond more to visual information than text. And that was 40%. I'm going to go ahead and type in 40, double click again on our 40. And I'm going to do visual, non-visual. So we'll do 40% for the dark orange and 60. Forty percent. Forty percent respond to visual information that text. Forty percent of people. Okay, it says 40% more. So what we're going to have to do, how do we do this? Actually, we, we would flip this, right? So we would do 60 and 40. Because what they're saying is 40% more of out of, you know, the 100%. So you would flip that. I was going to say that doesn't make sense if I did that that way. So 40% more people respond to visual information than text. So out of this hundred, you know, it's really like a little bit more of the, of the 40 actual percentage, if that makes sense. <clears throat> okay, the next statistic would be um, communication. Communications will be visual by 2018. 84%. Double click on this again. Visual and non visual, 84. So then what you want to do is just go ahead and minus out. 84 from 100, which is 16 for the non-visual. Oh, that doesn't even look right. Hold on. What is going on here? 16. There we go. Okay. And then last but not least, Infographic design. Oh. Why is this doing this? Increases by one percent 
each day. Sorry guys, I'm just doing, I'm trying to get this. Ah, really? Hold on one second. Is it driving me nuts? All right. Uh, now you don't have to say by 1%, you could just put infographic, desi uh, infographic design increases each day. So you can do 1% here. You don't even have to have that whole wording be like that. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, you, you were actually doing, um, did you do a template for that, Christina? Oh, okay. I thought you actually, what I thought you did was, I thought that was all done by scratch. And I thought you were ahead on assignment two. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess there is some some cons with starting a little early, right? My my bad. I thought I thought you were uh, doing assignment two. Ah, so yeah, you're gonna have to uh, change it up a bit. But you know what? It's good to kind of get that experience anyway. You'll be ahead anyway to uh, redo all that. I know it's kind of a pain, but all right. <laughs> it's like the last thing you want to hear, right? Okay, the next thing, so I have all my, my percentages in here. The only thing that I have left, she's laughing now, but she's ready to like, you know, she's ready to snap, right? <laughs> You're like, oh, no. <coughs> Hopefully not. All right, so we did the first four, and now we just have to do the last two. Um, approximately 13 million result, results on this, or, or I'm sorry, approximately 13 million results on this search for infographic on Google, and infographics are liked and shared on social media 30 times more than any other type of content. So you can kind of reword this based on what you're, um, kind of how you're saying it in here. Yeah, save it for, for next week for sure. I'm gonna take, let's see here. What's interesting is you can actually go with, um, with one of these, which is kind of already kind of visually plots it out for you here, like how everything's kind of aligned. So you can pick one of these if you'd like. Um, let me show you real quick. If I click on this, I can boop, plop that in there. How nice is that, right? Or, you know, and you can always edit this if you want, or you can kind of do your own thing, just using the type tool. It's just the type tool here. I'm gonna go ahead and do my own thing. I'm gonna align this to both sides of my box here. I'm gonna make it align center. And I'm gonna type in 13, because that was that million to 13 million number. Oops, alignment. We already got that. And I'm going to choose. Let's see all these different fonts here. Choose Ultra. If I selected that, sorry guys. Ultra. There we go. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And make it stand out more. All right, and then under that, I'm gonna do a new type subtitle box. And this is where I'm gonna plug in that information that's given to you guys. So million search results for infographic on Google. Oops.
center align. I'm gonna make it a little different here. It's kind of why I did the upper and lower case. I think it's kind of cool to uh, play around with the hierarchy there. And then I'm gonna give us just a little bit more boldness here and make it just a little smaller. We don't want it to be huge because this is kind of, we don't want it to compete with the headline. I guess that's what I'm saying here. So you don't want it to be huge, huge. Let's take it down to 26 and let's take this down a little bit too, just a little bit. There we go. All right. Pull this up a little bit so it reads together. If we have it too far apart, it won't read together very well. Notice how I put some space in between the 13 and the line. Definitely much needed too. Okay, I'm just gonna take uh, just a regular text again for our last bit of information. And I'm gonna put a little bit of space in between this and that, what I just have in there. And I'm gonna type in here the next set of information, which is infographics are liked. And I can copy and paste this in here actually, and shared on social media. Can make it seem like the 13 is holding up the line. That's right. Three times more than any other type of content. And yeah, we want to make sure it's secondary as well. So we're going to make this a little smaller. And then I'm going to give this kind of a different typeface. I'm going to make it a little bigger. It's a little hard to see that. But I'll keep it black. I want to keep it a little different than what we have the information above there. Um, next, I'm going to balance things out. See the bottom margin I have up here is a little bit bigger. So I'm going to pull this up a little bit. Kind of balance this stuff out here. I'm going to select all. Pull this stuff up a little bit. This all should set. This is proximity. So all of this should read together as one. And then this information down here will it'll still kind of go together but it's going to be separate a little bit too so this section's together and then this section's together so there we go balance out a little bit better pull this up a little bit okay all right so that's all of our information. Um, when I'm ready to go to share this or download this, I can go ahead and hit download. And it's going to give me options. It can even give me a vector PDF option or just a regular PDF or an interactive PDF. Um, business only, you know, you get to upgrade for that. But um, so that, I'm not sure why it's not letting me do that. Zoom out here. Let's hit download and it's not letting me download this. Let me see what size I have to probably upgrade, don't I? I thought this was free. Hmm. Upgrade to premium. Export is not available. Okay, so I'm going to hit share anyway. And I'm going to, ooh, I can't do that either. Before I did this, actually, let me publish. Publish this. When I did this um, demo the other time, it, it was free. So this is kind of why it's surprising to me. But if you hit publish, if it's not letting you download it, just for the reasons why it wouldn't let me download either, just take a screenshot of what you did. That's, that's perfect, because I'm gonna have to look at, you know, a flat file anyway. So do a command shift four, just make sure it's big on your screen. Go ahead and make the screenshot. Command shift four will let you do the little cross arrows and then you can take a picture of it. And then we'll take, put it on your, uh, on your desktop for a review. So here is what I have. This is what you would upload to, um, for grading. If you can't share it like through a PDF, you can't export it. 
I clicked on a free infographic and it still wouldn't let me export as a certain file because it said I needed to upgrade. As long as you can preview it in this way, take a screenshot, I'm fine with you guys sending that as your final submission. <laughs> I don't want you guys having to pay for anything and upgrading. You guys shouldn't have to worry about doing that for this class. So, you know, if you ran, ran into that same issue, just like I did, now you kind of know a workaround. All right, any questions about that? Okay, it's just a few things to think about. Um, so using a template to create an infographic will still leaves the designer with some crucial decisions. The overall layout design, the icons or images, colors, fonts, and graphs you choose will greatly impact the message and, and the successful telling of the story. So always think of your audience. What is the best way to catch and, and hold their attention? Advertisers often refer to the hook something that triggers an emotional response in the audience and makes a connection that gets them hooked. Visual information also needs to have that hook to be effective. The placement and size of that visual hook become important. For example, placing it in the center for emphasis or at the end as a reward makes it more effective as a story. If a joke starts out with the punchline, then what is the use of the beginning? So it's almost like, a, you know, obviously think of it as a story. So there are different options for visualizing research numbers and each can be presented in a creative and captivating way. For example, percentages show well in pie charts, but numerical values are better in unique bar graphs. If numbers don't fit a consistent scale, using symbols to quantify the number in a diagram may be a clearer and more interesting option. So carefully considering the options and choices of templates makes it more unique and will let your skills as a designer shine through. All right, so just uh, as we went through, I am your client. Um, therefore, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, these are the facts, again, listed in your, um, that I just took from, uh, the, there's a Word file in your assessment. And just kind of be mindful of the assignment requirements. So you need to include all the listed data in the infographic, add a headline for the infographic, your choice, Choose appropriate charts and or graphs to uh, accurately relay the information. Choose any icons or graphics appropriately to fit the content. And then some things to keep in mind, pick the appropriate visual uh, data visualization for your information. How does the template fit with your message? Consider the takeaway first. What should the audience learn from the infographic? Create an engaging headline, proposing a question that your infographic will help Proposing a question that your infographic will help to answer will immediately spark interest. So you might want to pose a question in your headline. Think about hierarchy. Give the most important information the most visual weight so that the vi viewers know what to take away. And consider your font and color choices. Keep the palette simple and relevant. Let's take a look at some infographics. Um, you know, just be inspired again. And like I said, this is like actually infographics that are in um, in motion here. This one's a little bit more intricate, almost like a publication setting. Uh, there's simple ones, how to be healthy without a gym, which is kind of funny. I actually just posted an infographic to announcements too, by the way, so check that out. Also remember, you know, we're always thinking about color, um, but this is kind of a neat little infographic about color uh, theory and how that fits in with brands. And this is an infographic on infographics, which is kind of funny. There's one about uh, the modern marketer, part artist and part scientist. So 
This one's a little hard to see. I'm gonna skip through some of these because it's a little different here. There we go. Here's the evolution of superhero movie. So there's some that definitely can be uh, very visually interesting. How to share a bed. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Monster movie sizes. Toddlers and teens have what they have in common. How would you like your graphic design? Pretty funny. All right, I actually have, I think I have some examples too. Here, give me one second. I didn't quite get to those for you guys. I have to pull these up. All right, so here, here are a few that I just pulled. Okay, hold on one second. I just found a whole bunch here. Give me one second, guys. Usually I have these already, but not today. Okay, here's one. I thought that was kind of interesting. So a different way to show this and just showing it verbally with these, with type and hierarchy. Here's more here. So you can see how interesting this is that the colors really, there's only really one color in this or two colors I should say if you're counting the black with the gray. Very interesting, visually interesting here. Um, some of these percentages are a little different than what you guys are given but kind of keep that in mind when things change during time. There's another one. And notice the high, the um, different headlines. So the the age of infographics is the headline for this one. This one is the rise of the infograph. And then the, this one actually has a subhead. How will the face of visual communication change? So it's kind of a neat way to, to pose a question there with your headline and give a little bit more insight of what the viewer is going to be looking at, why they're looking at it. Here, this one's visual data and infographics. How are they impacting us? That's a great um, headline with a subhead posing a question to what your data that you're seeing and why you're looking at it. What is it answering? And this one, statistics on visual data and infographics, just basically using what was given to you guys in the assignment here for this headline. Let's see how they kind of pointed out certain things with these um, arrows and percentages and then in between with the little pictograms. Visual infographics, statistics on visual data and infographics. And last, oh, sorry guys. My telemarketer is calling me today. Visual data. <laughs> Hello. Kind of a neat little line of how to follow from one to five, I believe. It would be nice to kind of maybe pose a question here like the other ones did, just the reason why we're looking at what we're doing. But anyway, I wanted to show you this because I think this really kind of sums up some ideas of what you can think about and how to approach this particular assessment. Hopefully that helps kind of understand um, a little bit better. Oh, I have a little bit more examples here. Hold on one second. I have uh, PDFs that were sent too, so. Opened up a little differently than the ping files. Okay. 
use this one, the power of infographics. Here's uh, this one, the, the use of visual data and infographics. Using the Google logo down here, which is kind of interesting. And a little like on social media, like a little Facebook like. And last but not least, these little icons here. All right, any questions or comments? Anything that you want to add, share, or have questions about? Looks like I'll be starting over again there. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh at you, but um, like I said, I thought you were already on assignment two with your project, so. <laughs> yeah, this one, I think that'll be a little easier. It's just kind of the, um, It'll depend on kind of your, because you can pick a really intricate template too. You know, let me go back here. I'm going to use software to be about all day. Okay, I use it to transfer in the background. Wait in the background. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it can take you a little while to kind of edit and change. Um, I think it would be, I think it's going to be a little bit more of a process kind of weeding through some of these and picking one that you like and that's appropriate for it, but yeah, exactly. So go ahead and look through the companies that are, you know, given to you guys, which one you want, and then go through, uh, you know, different templates to, that you can utilize. Keep it simple. I wouldn't, I wouldn't choose one that's heavily involved. Um, it might, it might be a little bit harder for you, you know, in that regards. And, and I think that's something that you, once you get into, like, for instance, this one, I probably would not choose just because there's so much stuff going on here for this particular assignment. So choose something a little bit more simple, just because I think it's, it wouldn't be kind of setting yourself, yourself up for failure. You know, you can kind of play around with it. And then if you want to kind of get more involved, you can. Yeah, too busy. I kept it pretty simple with this one. Um, so, and you can pull stuff out. So if you really like the design of it, but you don't like how busy it is, you can kind of take some stuff out and, you know, I don't know if you can adjust the overall size of it, but you can take certain, um, elements out so you can simplify it a little bit better. Some interesting things in here. Um, there might be even, let me see here, process informational, timeline list, fun data. What's fun data look like? Let's take a look at that. Oh, okay. Interesting things in there. Um, for your assignments, you might want to look at geographic because you're going to be showing maps. Now, obviously, you're not using a template, but you can be inspired by maps and so on and so forth. Informational. This is obviously what it is. More informational, not statistical. Yeah, the Irish is cool. It looks fun. Yep, the little rainbow. Some really neat things to kind of just look at and see how people have done it. And some of it reads better. Here's one that's statistics too. I don't know what emoticons are, are used there, but yeah, but there's some really cool things in here just to kind of check out. And I know it's visual, we're all visual people here and as design students, so. This should really pique your interest to kind of peruse through some of these. Oh, here's for Father's Day, Super Dad. Here's coffee. K 
chemical reaction, so many different infographics, some fun stuff. I think that's what's nice about being able to, to edit and hone in on a specific, you know, statistical, if you're doing more statistical type infographics. Because it could get, it could get pretty overwhelming, the different templates that you have. All right, so with that being said, you have no questions on assessment one. What about assignment one? Do you have any questions about that? Let's go ahead and read through the rest of this because I actually didn't get through all of this too, but if you have any questions, let me know. So actually, we just read over this on the slide. So it's basically pretty much what to keep in mind in the assignment requirements. Okay, so just kind of make it appropriate. List all the data in the infographic. Make sure you have a headline of your choice. Things to keep in mind, we talked about that. Um, submission requirements, depending on the service you choose, you'll be given different options of files to save, most likely a JPEG, PNG, or a PDF. If it does not offer any file download options, you may submit a link to the completed design or take a snapshot or a screenshot, just like what I did. And then you're gonna submit your file name it as such, and then provide a reference link to the template service you used in the comment section of your submission. Any questions about that? Easy peasy, right? Let me see, was there an example in assignment one for you guys? Let me go back here, I can't remember. No, sometimes they give examples. I thought maybe there was an example I missed there. Yeah, so I mean, there's so many different um, options here to so visualize. I've used this one too. I think I use this one for a resume. Is this really neat? You can actually plug in your resume in here. Just to, oh, it's not in here. I don't know why this link isn't working. Um, but this is kind of neat. I, I, I did this before you sign in with either your LinkedIn or your email. And what's neat is you plug in all your information, like copy paste uh, from your resume, and it creates an infographic uh, based on your resume. Pretty neat. Let me see if I actually have mine. Saved here. Because I know I did, I did my um, resume through this. I don't think I saved it though. No, I don't think I did. I'll have to dig through all my stuff, but it's pretty neat. So, mm -hmm, it's kind of cool. And it creates an infographic for you. And then you can edit it if you want, but what's neat is you plug in the information and it creates all the charts and bar graphs that you want. It's kind of neat. I tried this one too, this easily. It's kind of a neat one. They're customizable, customizable as well. And each have their own style to it too. So you might want to check out those. So when you pay for, Okay. So those are the, the pick, these uh, creative blogs pick of best infographic tools from around the web. All right, did you wanna share anything? Um, have any questions, Christina? I know I'm kind of picking on you because you're the only one in here. But this is, I kind of got to the end of the lecture and if you wanna share anything or, or Whatever, now's the time. Okay. <laughs> yes, I would actually like to share, uh, if you know, if that's okay, share some of your work too. I'm gonna pull some for next week so we can take a look at what everybody has going on. I think that's a fun way to, to see what where everybody is and you know look at each other's work because we're not coming into a classroom where we're pinning up our work on the board physically so we'll, yep we'll definitely do that um yeah so just kind of make sure you're responding to your discussion uh your peers for the discussion 
this week, getting in your assignment strategy, content strategy, and announcements. I don't know if you checked this out or not. I did post the template to announcements the other day. So here it is in the second uh, link here down. Um, it's attached as an InDesign file. You may not have the same fonts that I have, so if you open it up and it says air or whatever, just ignore it. You can change your fonts to whatever you want it to be. But there is the optional uh, template if you want to use that for assignment one. And just remember, you're not designing anything infographic-wise for assignment one. You're just doing a strategy for week two. And then yesterday I posted, last night, um, the do's and don'ts of effective infographics in an infographic. I thought that was just kind of funny. So it says, do pay attention to organization, so your grid. Do show impact with typography and colors. Do illustrate your point. Don't try to cover multiple topics, because it gets a little confusing and overwhelming. Don't stuff it with too much data or long sentences. And then don't hide info that isn't also in your text. So keep it simple. All right, well, I'm gonna wrap it up. You guys can get started on your stuff. Um, and then next week when we meet up, don't forget we're gonna be meeting on Tuesday and Thursday next week. If you want to um, share anything, you know, have any questions, we can just uh, go over it then. Okay, good. Christina, you went to the Writing Center for your main discussion post? Good. I was told to citation everywhere because it's better to have citations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's easy to find that. I mean, you don't have to, you definitely have to use one in, you know, specified uh, from what the discussion kind of prompted you, but you can get citations they can even be in a book that you have at home so don't forget about that too I mean when I was in graduate school I was often and it sounds funny but I always I don't know if you guys know what a library is an actual physical library but I used to go to a library because I did a lot of papers but you know there's information that you can find in books too that you might sort cite from so don't forget <laughs> okay do you know the Dewey Decimal System? That's what, that's my question to you, because that's how old I am. <laughs> Thank goodness they, like, got rid of that, right? Kind of uh, dating myself here. There you go. I like it. See, I remember the Dewey Decimal System. Yep. And I remember having no computers until I was a senior in high school. So that's really going to date me. But hey, what are you going to do? You guys are keeping me young. And dial up. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm always uh, making fun of my boyfriend who still has an AOL email address. I always make fun of him. I'm like, you know what? I think you need to. Uh... Oh, yeah. At AOL.com. I guess email, I don't know, people still use the email. Uh, it's kind of funny, but I'm like, I'm going to sign you up for Gmail or something else because this is, uh, what is it, 2019, right? You got to get going here. I always make fun of them, though. It's funny. All right, well, it's a beautiful day here in Pittsburgh. It's finally sunny. It's not rainy. It's not gloomy. So I'm going to go out and try to enjoy the day as much as I can while I'm doing kind of other work and running around. So I'm going to leave you to your work. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. Yeah, there you go. It's not the same, right? It's all digital now. <laughs> All right, Christina, let me know if you want to send me your work too, and I can you know, give you some feedback if you want before you submit it, like you did. Uh, I'd be more than happy to do that. <laughs> All right, you have a wonderful day, and thanks for uh, coming in. Talk to you soon. <laughs> have a good one.